Belinda, before we went to commercial break, you were highlighting some of your concerns with Bill 12, which sought to uh, mandate vaccinations for all, all workers of education and healthcare in Ontario. And I remember seeing that, and I was quite shocked. And, and it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but anyways, continue your thought, because I know you were trying to explain what some of the political maneuvering was happening behind the scenes. Yeah, so we did a call to action. And uh, again, like I said, thanks to your viewers and many Ontarians, they reached out called and emailed all the MPPs and the PC MPPs, even though in the debate, they talk about encouraging these uh, institutions to make their own vaccine mandates, they voted no. So now they're on the record, not once, but twice, voting no to a uh, provincial wide vaccine mandate for healthcare and education workers. So that was a, a big win. But, you know, as we know with Doug Ford, there's always something else brewing beneath the surface. And uh, we're going to wait to see what happens next week. But, you know, I would encourage individuals to continue to reach out and continue to let the, the powers that be know that this is unacceptable. OK, but that that bill was a liberal MPP driven bill. So that was a like a correct. private member's bill from from the liberals. Uh, That's so correct. why was it shocking that the conservatives voted against it? Isn't that kind of what happens if the liberals introduce something, the conservatives vote against it and vice versa? Not necessarily. Um, they likely would have let it go on a voice vote, which means there's no recorded vote. They would have said aye and it would have gone straight to committee. Uh, and again, just looking at their official transcript, what they said, they are not against having a provincial mandate. In fact, they're encouraging uh, institutions to implement their own. They just don't want to be on the hook on it for it? It certainly sounds like it, doesn't it? Uh, kind of pass the buck mentality. Okay, well, that's that's very disturbing. So with this information, you know, maybe I'm a pessimist, but I feel like there's, this is just too much politics. Could Can we ever navigate our way out of COVID knowing there's so much politics at play? And, you know, as a citizen here in Ontario, I'm wondering, is there the end? I, I, I agree, the goalposts keep moving. Rightfully, wrongfully, I don't. it doesn't seem like it's right. You tell me. I think we need to keep the pressure up. Um, and, you know, Right now, everyone's singing the same song, and I'm trying, and the New Blue Party is trying to bring balance to the, to the debate, to bring facts. Um, and we know the, the next provincial election is coming up, June 2nd, 2022. Uh, and, you know, there's no, it's no coincidence that after Bill 12 was defeated, and a lot of attention was brought to that bill, that the following day, uh, Premier Ford announces, you know, how, to get, how we're getting out of step three and, and next steps. So, you know, the pressure works. And that's why I'm saying we need to keep up the pressure to ensure that we can get back to normal as soon as possible. Okay, so with this um, getting out of COVID or our exit strategy from the Ford government, you know, there were a lot of things that were promised uh, at that press conference. And I remember hearing most of the restrictions and, and, um, and uh, I guess, edicts, if you want to call them, would be lifted, including like the masking mandate. Gosh, who would have even think that would ever be lifted in time? But by March, 2022, should we count on that? <laughs> you know, if, if uh, time has told us anything, it's that everything that uh, the government has told us so far, it, it, it gets changed very quickly. And that's why I'm, I'm telling people to continue up with the pressure because, you know, little changes are happening. Unfortunately, once they announce the, the, the restrictions being lifted a little bit in terms of capacity limits for those businesses who are implementing that vaccine passport, then they added a little thing saying, hey, if you're a business or industry that doesn't or are not required to implement a, a mandate, if you choose to, then you can lift your capacity limits too. And what I'm thinking about specifically is churches, unfortunately. Are we, we only have 30 seconds left, but are, do we feel that churches will have huge restrictions coming forward? I don't think restrictions coming forward, but now they're giving those churches uh, the power to implement their own vaccine passport in order to have full capacity. And I hope we don't see that.